I made a video last year where I followed a ship down the Manchester Ship Canal and tried to figure out the web of communications that the canal system uses. I'll put the link in the description and at the end of this one, but here's a bit of backstory for you first. The Manchester Ship Canal runs 36 miles from the Mersey Estuary near the port of Liverpool to Salford Quays in Manchester. Large vessels enter the River Mersey from the Irish Sea at Liverpool and travel to Eastham Lock, the start of the Ship Canal. They then travel to various points along the canal dropping things like grain, liquid gas and other forms of cargo before heading back out. There's a control centre at Eastham Locks which monitors all movements on the canal and there's regular radio comms to listen to when ships are navigating the canal as well as its various bridges and locks. Eastham uses radio to contact all vessels and my Miss Marple-esque investigation work confirmed that the swing bridges along the canal also use radio comms and there's also a bit of mobile phone communication at play as well. Who'd think we'd get large cargo ships in central Manchester, eh? So, you join me today at Latchford Locks near Warrington. It's a Monday morning, it's minus three, and there's an icy fog causing problems on the ship canal, with visibility down to just a couple of hundred metres. Latchford is one of five sets of locks on the ship canal, which consist of a large lock for ocean-going vessels, and a smaller lock for smaller vessels like cranes, dredgers, tugs and barges. There's also a larger mooring area and space either side for two large vessels to pass and there was even submarines using these locks in the late 1960s. This morning we've got Gail, a one-year-old LPG tanker registered to the Netherlands who was brought down by a pilot from Eastham Locks after entering the ship canal the previous night. Incoming fog and a reduction in visibility meant that it was safer to moor her overnight in the locks in the hope that conditions improved this morning. Eastham has called Gail a couple of times over the radio but the captain hasn't responded yet but as I arrive signs of life start to show on board Gail. There's a crew of nine and they're prepping the vessel to leave the locks. Not long after the pilot boards Gail and calls Eastham to give some information and let the controller know they intend to depart. Eastham, Eastham, Gail. Gail, Eastham. Eastham, Gail, yeah, come on, it's on, on board now, we've just run us up in Latchford. Uh, what we got? 4.6 draft, 9 plus 1 on board, no defects. I'll speak to the Amy now, I'll believe he's on his way now. Okay, understood, yeah. Please make a good progress. Thank you. Cheers, Tommy. At the end of the transmission, they mention Imi, a 29 year old general cargo ship registered to the Bahamas. Within minutes, a black shape appears in the mist further up the canal. It's Immy, and she's left a mooring at the old Partington Coaling Basin an hour or so earlier, and he's now heading towards Latchford Locks. Just before Eastham contacted Gale, they contacted Immy to report visibility conditions along the canal. Immy, Immy, Eastham. Uh, yeah, on the camera now, um, it's looking worse, the visibility from Latchford Locks, up and upstream. I'd say it's around two to three cables. Um, Looks like it's closed in since we last spoke. All oh, right, okay, thanks, Tom. Well, we're committed now anyway, so uh, I think it's easy to get down towards um, Warburton. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, sorry, I tried to call the gale, but the captain mustn't be covering the channel, uh, which he should be because he should be sailing in 20 minutes. But I um, can't get hold of him. The lock that Gail is sat in is almost full, and the pilot contacts Immy to discuss possible manoeuvres once Gail is out of the lock. Immy, Immy, Gail. Gail, Immy, hi Phil, uh, we're passing the station pumps now, and we're a couple of minutes away from the ferry. Invisibility's been good all the way really, the worst bit looks like a flat should, but there's uh, no problems at the moment. OK, well, they're just running us up here now, so we're not top level yet. So when the gates are open either, we'll go in the street straight if you want, or you pop your bow in whichever is first if you want. Yeah, OK, well, um, yeah, we'll just keep coming gently and then uh, just get the floor when you're ready, yeah? OK, cheers, man. As the lock filled, I was intrigued by this radio mast at Latchford Locks that has been there for many years. 
at the top are these two sets of back-to-back -back Yagi antennas which point in one way in the rough direction of Eastham and the other way in the rough direction of Manchester. If we look at Eastham, there's clearly directional antennas pointing back towards the rough direction of Latchford, but this building is a security gatehouse, and I was told by somebody inside that Eastham Control's radio room is in another building further up the locks. I was told this antenna at Latchford formed part of a relay to increase coverage from Eastham towards Salford Keys, which makes sense, but the frequency used on the ship canal 156.7 is a simplex channel only, so I'm not sure. The mast has been there for a long time, and the antennas seem in good condition, but I don't know their current status. There's also a couple of dipoles further down which point south, and I can't be certain what they're for either. During Gale's time in the locks, all of the crew on the ground were communicating by mobile phone, which was the assumption I made in last year's video, however there is radio comms between the vessels and the swing bridges which you'll see shortly. By now Immy is getting closer to Latchford and WD Michelle, a tug that works the canal, is moored at Latchford and is getting ready to leave. Gale, Eastern, that's all copied, uh, Phil. Just some information, WD Michelle's just waiting round by the, the sluices there. She's going to remain where she is until yourselves and the Amy have done your manoeuvring. Over. See the Michelle there, okay, yeah. Copy that, Tom, thank you, Eastern, WD Michelle. WD Michelle, Eastern. Yeah, Eastern, we'd like to leave the top level of uh, Batchford here, make our way up to Barton. Over. One scan, clear, then you can pass up. Yeah, he's Tim WD Michelle. Uh, we've got the Emmy in the lock there now. And, uh, I'm going to leave the sluice way here, top of Latchford, and make my way up to Barton, behind the uh, Gale over. Yep, that's all for my deal. The tug will wait for Gale to exit the locks and then follow her up the canal on separate duties. Amy slows down to almost a stop as she approaches the locks, which by now are full. The huge gates are open to allow Gail to exit. Her rope is pulled aboard and she slowly exits the lock, keeping out of the way of Immy. The two huge ships pass as Gale starts her journey to a destination and Immy's crew slowly guides the vessel into the open lock. This isn't the last we'll see of Gale today but we'll leave her for now as she navigates the canal towards Partington, followed closely by WD Michelle. Immy then enters the lock and comes to a complete stop. The gates close behind her and water is slowly released out of the opposite set of gates to drop the huge ship down into the lock. The process is slow and takes a while. By now the freezing fog is back and visibility on the ship canal is extremely poor. Immy's pilot calls Nutsford Road Swing Bridge half a mile ahead to ask about visibility but these transmissions were recorded from home and my home setup couldn't hear their response but it does confirm radio comms between the swing bridges and the ships. Hey, Nutsford Road, Nutsford Road, Immy. Good yeah, morning, I'm just wondering what the visibility is like, can you speak? Alright, um, okay, I can't see anything down the canal at all. More lane, more lane, 
the visibility is getting worse, and Immy's pilot can't see more than about 200 metres ahead at this point. He then calls Eastham to ask for visibility reports, and Eastham's controller checks the remote cameras at Nutsford Road Swing Bridge. Eastham, Eastham. Eastham. Hi, Tom, man. You know what I mean? There's a little few thoughts along down from Latchford at all, isn't there? From the Nutsford Road camera, I can just about make out the silhouette of the two bridges either side of Nutsford Road. By this time, Immy has been in the locks for a while, and Eastham is concerned she won't make the last lock at Eastham before the tide is too low. Its last lock is about 1700 out, so even if you get going in good order, it's one and a half hours a big ask to make that lock. Uh, yeah, I um, I mean, we could do like two weeks in three hours normally on this ship, but I think with the visibility we'll be going a lot slower than normal. So, uh, three and a half hours. So, I guess that'll be uh, half one. 13 30 might be the cut off from that sort of thing. By now there appears to be a problem with one of the swing bridges ahead. I can only assume that comms were made by mobile phone as the radio was quiet. This causes further delays to Immy, who is still in Latchford Locks. Yeah, I'll just if you want uh, any uh, communication from the engineers on this bridge. It becomes clear that the vessel won't make the last lock opening at Eastham, so they cancel the pilot from Liverpool and try to come up with a plan. Right, OK, in that case, 13, 10 now. I don't think you're going to get down here before 1700, so um, I'm going to cancel Liverpool pilot. OK, yeah, I'll copy. Uh, visibility is up and down. Good reason to do it, right? Yeah, I'd like you to remain on board um, for, for a certain for a while, because if it doesn't prove it, it'd be, be good to get you down through, through the bridges. Uh, but I'm unsure what the weather's doing. So if just remain on board for now, I'll call the agent and, and tell them that it won't be leaving the canal on this tide. Okay, dokie. Okay, thanks, Tom. Amy, Eastern. Eastern, please. Hi, uh, yes, um, we've, we've cancelled Liverpool pilot with the agent, and we've just called the supervisor of the engineers and he's going to get us a sit rep on the, sorry, the swing bridge. Um, but in all probability, you're not going to be able to make it all the way down anyway, are you, with the uh, the fog? So um, how do you feel about just calling it a day now? Um, yeah, I've just spoke to Lightfoot, who's just been in contact with the engineers and the the bridge as we speak, I think, so... May, may hear a little bit more in a couple of minutes, but yeah, whatever you think, Tom, just let me know. Um, the visibility at the moment is the best it's been for a while, but uh, it is up and down, that's good. Okay, well, in that, in that order, we should have step on and see if we can make some headway. Um, yeah, I can see when we're here from this bridge shortly, then um, it's possible to still go, yeah. Okay, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's good. Cool. By now, visibility is slightly better. The bridge appears to be fixed, and Immy's pilot and the controller at Eastham agree that they'll leave the locks at Latchford and head over to a lay-by up at Runcorn, where they'll moor for the night. Immy, Eastham. Hi, Tom. Hi, yeah, I spoke to the engineer supervisor. He said they uh, should be testing it now in the next five minutes. Uh, same uh, information you've got. We've also looked at the cameras and the bridges on the way down, and we'd, I've, me and crew have assessed them as each more than four cables at least, all the way down. Uh, the best it's looked um, all morning. Yeah, okay, 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 we'll give it five minutes. Aye, aye, just Tom. He's, um, in the east. In the east. Yeah, hi, Tom. Uh, I don't know if you copied that. We've um, got the all-go from the engineers here, so they're just opening the lock gates now. Okay, yeah, good luck. Uh, come on down. And um, I guess that's just the Rumcorn lay-by or not work, is it? Uh, Rumcorn lay-by, yeah. Um, hi, hi, Rumcorn lay-by. How about you? It's um, in the east, just playing with a lot, can I have some on the way? Hi, hi, good luck, thank you. The departure from the lot was going to be a while, and I wanted to move on before the light faded. 
Amy departed a couple of hours later, but as she got further from my base station, I lost the radio signal, but she did more up that evening at Runcorn and stayed there the night. While all this has been going on, WD Michelle has made its way up the canal to Barton, where I heard them calling the swing bridge operator, further confirming that the bridge is used radio for communications. Barton Bridge, WD Michelle. Barton Bridge. Yeah, Barton, if it's alright with you, we're going to run a few lines, three, uh, three or four lines, and that'll be us. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Barton Bridge, Michelle, yeah, that's us done now, fancy assistance. Roger that, thanks. So now you join me just over six miles away on the lifted railway line at Caddis Head Viaduct. This is one of a few mammoth examples of Victorian engineering at its finest, with another example being Latchford Viaduct, which was sat in the dense fog, towering above the road next to the locks we visited before. Caddishead Viaduct was built in 1892 by the Cheshire Lines Committee to cross the newly built Manchester Ship Canal and carry the railway line from Skelton Junction in Timperley over to Glazebrook. The line closed to passenger services in 1964 and was used by freight services until the late 1980s when the line closed completely due to expensive repairs being needed. It's funny because that's the same reason for the line closing over the Latchford Viaduct. There are a few holes in the bed of the bridge, but nothing too major considering how long it's been disused. It's actually wide enough for four tracks, but only ever carried two on one side, which reduced to one at some point after passenger services ended. The other side was used to carry cables and pipelines across the viaduct. There are plans to open a heritage route over the bridge, but saying and doing are two different things, and the bridge requires extensive restoration, likely costing millions of pounds. Metal containers were placed here to stop people crossing the viaduct and to stop fighting between rival estate gangs in the 1980s, although you can access it if you know where to go. Down below is the remains of a railway viaduct at low level that carried the original deviation of the line, and just to the western side, low down, is the reason why we're here, Gale. She's been here just over an hour or so, offloading liquid propylene gas into the pressurised pipeline at Basel. Now the light is fading and temperatures are continuing to drop fast, so we'll leave our voyage of detective work here. Immy is tucked away at Runcorn for the night, and Gail will stay at the old coaling basin for the night before likely picking up her pilot in the morning and returning back to Latchford Locks. The next day visibility improved and things got back to normal. You can see Stenberg, a mixed chemical tanker leaving Eastern Locks, heading for the port of Liverpool after dropping off whatever she was carrying. Oh, and before I go, someone at Latchford recognised me, said hello and said they loved the videos, so if you're watching this, I hope you enjoyed it, and to everyone else, I'm off home after 8 hours of filming in sub-zero temperatures. See you next time.